Welcome to the Theotrade Weekend Edition. This is Don Kaufman. Here we are, March 5th, 2016. Let's take a quick look at kind of the week in review. We're going to go right forward into what we can expect next week. And I'm also going to do a little bit of a position reconciliation. That is, positions that I've got on, positions that I aspire to put on, positions that I wish I never had on. Oh, come on. We all have those. First and foremost, taking a look at the S&Ps this past week is, once again, it's the market that matters, all right? It's not necessarily the individual stocks. You know, let's not be, you know, too focused on a Google and Netflix and Apple because it's broader markets that are still driving individual stocks out here. So if we zoom in on the uh, the past week over here, explosive rally. It's the only thing you can call it. We start out the week right near the 1950. We end up the week where 2000 almost on the button. If you don't necessarily believe in uh, markets migrating to round numbers, well, uh, last week we closed in and around the 1950 level, almost on the button. And this week, what are we doing? Closing one point shy of 2000, ladies and gentlemen. Um, after an explosive move earlier in the week, the S&Ps kind of continued to forge newer highs over here. Not sure if you recall this, but again, um, last week, the week before, I said it would not surprise me to see the S&Ps explode all the way to 1975, even above 2000. And we're going to talk about, again, kind of reconciliation of position. So nothing that you don't know, right? S&Ps exploded to the upside over here. However, let's just discuss for a moment where we're at kind of in the trading range. For that, I'm going to go just go to a, a three-year weekly here. And I just want to display most of the trade that has occurred since uh, quite literally, you know, I come all the way back here to the summer, June of uh, 2014. Most of the trade we've actually seen occur pretty much again from June 2014 to right where we currently are. We are dead center of that range, okay? We've ranged as high as, you know, 21 and change over here, okay? Roughly speaking, as low as, you know, 1850 without looking at these reactionary lows. We couldn't be more dead center than that. Now, I know if you're, if you're tuning into this, you're looking for like, okay, so which way are we going to go over here? What's a directional bias when we're dead centered, okay? that kind of, you know, hinge point, if you will, of the market. And we're going back, you know, two plus years and looking at the market actually channeling in this region over here. Most of what we're going to do uh, is going to be some premium selling in and around that. I'm going to take a few directional positions in some individual equity products. And that's something that, you know, you'll see my own position reflect. And I'm actually going to show a little bit of my own position here so that if you're constructing your position, uh, it may or may not mirror Okay, some of the risk that's inside of my position right now. So let's uh, let's go to it over here. Let's let's jump. Okay, first of all, we're going to reconcile a little bit of my position. Then we're going to go in here. We're going to look at the week ahead and kind of what you can expect. One other thing I want to mention right up front: we have a class coming up this week. So for all of you that are members, okay, there is a class coming up, and that class is going to be held this coming Wednesday. That is March 9th. March 9th. It is 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, if you're interested in it, it's uh, theotrade.com forward slash iron up. It is an iron condors class. Okay, it's perfect discussion to have over here. Just recently, we did the premium selling class. Again, if you're a member of Theotrade, it's fine. Join us. You're signed up for it. If you're not a member of Theotrade, you can sign up for it. I will discuss that here before we leave you this weekend. Let's get into it. Let's look at uh, a few positions. First of all, I have spider beta weighted my position, which means I've turned my entire position into terms of the spiders. Okay. Right now, I'm currently short the market 3,735 shares worth of the spiders. That means if the spiders are going to move up or down about a dollar, I'm going to make or lose about $3,700 and change. Okay. So, 
that's the kind of directional risk that I'm incurring on the net position here in what we have for the Theo trade account. I'm going to take off the beta weighting for a moment. You can see I'm short two S&Ps and I'm short two NASDAQ. Clearly, I want to be net short right now. However, my net short position, that's not for right here, right now. Okay, In trading, you can't be ultra short term because as I mentioned a moment ago, if you look at the SPX, you know what's the directional bias right now? I think anybody that tries to decipher what direction the market is headed, like the next week, the next two weeks, this marketplace that we're in right now, it's all about catalysts. Okay, The market is doing nothing more than seeking any news event it can possibly get its grubby paws on and it's you know, exploding to the upside or fading off of that news out there. And uh, again, look no further than this past week and the week before that. I mean, two weeks ago, we saw an oil report, oil report, and the market exploded to the upside off the oil report. That's actually what fueled a huge amount okay, of a recent rally over here. Then we get this jobs number, okay? That happens yesterday. The jobs number, nothing, okay? Absolutely nothing out of there. Of the way, I'll foreshadow here for a moment. This coming week, there is a little bit of what I would call a hidden announcement coming this week. And again, we'll get there momentarily. But uh, back over to my overall position, I have a longer duration position that is short. In the meantime, I'm taking a couple of bullish, couple of bearish positions over here to cruise down. Okay, first and foremost, I've got a position on Apple now. Position on Apple, Captain, one lot strikes again. Got a very mild short position on Apple. I purchased the 105, 100 put spread. Okay, the 105, 100 put spread. That's one of those what I call risk a buck to make a buck kind of trades, but I'm risking 250 to be able to make 250. Amazon position, a mild bearish position in Amazon. Long duration, short position in Costco. Long duration means I am actually short the shares. Okay, selling premium against it. All right. As I continue on down the list over here, I have a leftover position in EEM. All right, I need to close it. The only reason I've actually kept it in the books right now is because, well, I'm eyeballing EEM. All right, it's had an explosive move to the upside. As I kind of cruise down over here, very small, short position in Facebook. Uh, similar trade instead of Starbucks, although I've got a number of positions in Starbucks. Uh, one of the positions that I think a lot of people are looking to mirror here. I do cruise over to Starbucks, and I think this is worthwhile explaining. But uh, in Starbucks, I'm 27 days out. 27 days out. You see, I've actually got several different positions. Uh, one of the primary positions is I'm long the 60 58 put spread. That means I purchased the 60 58 put spread. Uh, purchased it for right around a dollar. So you risk a buck to be able to make a buck. Eh, you know, kind of work in my direction. We're right there, kind of the key inflection point. Not really making money, not really losing money. Plenty of time to be right, plenty of time to be wrong. Remember, my trades, they're not just about like a directional bias. They're about time, okay? They're about price, but they're about probability of touching. And that is, I don't have to be right today. I don't have to be right tomorrow. But sometime in the next 27 days, I have to be right. Okay? And I don't know about you, but I, I, I kind of like my odds over there. In the SPX, what am I doing right now? I'm selling some premium. You know, 86 bucks a day. It's not glorious, but if you haven't looked, volatility is kind of down. I'm selling premium in a number of ways in the SPX, many of which a couple of iron condors in here. So, uh, again, those iron condors, that's what I'm going to be discussing this coming week, this Wednesday, uh, iron up and not just about like iron condors. You can go out and you can read an iron condor. We're going to get into some extremely detailed criteria in iron condors. Um, target, leftover position, Walmart, kind of a longer duration. I own some Walmart out there. I can't believe it. I know I actually own some Walmart. The XLE, I've actually got a, uh, a short position on XLE. And again, I like to go through and I like to reconcile positions once in a while on a week to week basis. Win, lose, or draw. No fear of showing you a winning trade. No fear of showing you a losing trade because these trades, you have to be able to sustain them. All right. So here's a position. It's 27 days out. Okay. It is actually a short position in the XLE. And you know, you sound so surprised, a short position in the XLE. But let's go over here to the XLE. 
for just the last few days, uh, it's moved, roughly speaking, from, oh, let's call it like 52 all the way okay, up to the 62 level. It's about a $10 move. Okay, It's a $10 move in about three weeks. Do you have any idea how long it's supposed to take a $10 move to occur? I mean, you got to go out 195 days to see an expected move of $11. When all I'm saying here, statistically speaking, like people look at, oh, I looked at a stochastic. It was overbought. I don't care if it's overbought or not. What I'm telling you right now is it's so far out of its expectations of price movement that I just kind of feel like, hey, statistically speaking, it could possibly come in a little bit. Come in means down. All right, wait, let's just draw it on the screen over here. It could go down because it is statistically speaking completely overblown. And I'm not willing to bet a ton of capital on there, right? You take little incremental bets. I bought again a 60 and a half, 58 and a half put spread. It's its exact same kind of, you know, if there's a quintessential trade that I use, I call it the risk a buck to make a buck trade. You got to love it over there. So that kind of reconciles a number of my positions. Yes, I am still short 5,000 shares of the XLF. Why? Because I don't like the financials. I initially used my XLF position to hedge okay, quite a lot of stock that I owned in a financial company. All right. 15 years I worked in a financial firm. We were a public company. So I was using the XLF to hedge that. I sold out of most of the stock okay, of the firm that I worked at, but I kept the short shares of the XLF. Why? You know, to kind of believe, you know, interest rates been low forever. You know, eventually that's going to put pressure forth to the financials. It's been working. Okay. Decent amount over there. So net net, that's quick reconciliation of, his, of my positions. The most important thing to recognize in here is just my net position. All right. So, you know, if the S&Ps explode up, Another, for instance, 50 points, that's a five-point move up in the spiders. A five-point move in the spiders, what's it going to cost Don? Well, I'm almost short 4,000 shares of the XLF. Okay, I'm almost fully allocated. I want to be net short 5,000 shares of the spiders. Why? Well, again, I will digress for a moment. I'm good at that. I will digress for a moment, and the reason I want to be net short is I just can't help over the duration of looking at that five-year chart and just saying, well, do I have risk to the upside? Of course I do. But let's let's get totally crazy here. Let's Oh, we could go all the way to 215 on the spiders. Yeah, we can go to 170 or 160. I see, okay, much more potential right now to the downside. I see the downside risks outweighing the upside potential. And that's it's good enough for me. And that's why I want to be net short. But that's, again, over the duration. In the midst of all that, I'm still trading individual stocks, both bullish, bearish, okay? Got a couple of bearish positions on, no doubt. You know, and I got a few deltas here and a few deltas there collecting, you know, 150 bucks. And this is, again, not a monstrous position that I've got on in here, okay? It's something that I think is reasonable that most of you can sustain, maybe not the 4,000 spider deltas of risk over there because if the spiders move up another five bucks i'm going to lose about twenty thousand dollars but that's comfortable for me now let's look forward at the next week okay key announcement moving into the next week and before i even get into the calendar here and show you one of the key announcements we'll go to the trade tab and the trade tab in thinkorswim and we'll go over to the spx Okay, and if you just close up all the options chains, what I want you to see is <clears throat> here's a, a four day expiration and a six day expiration. Yes, there's like a midweek expiration now. Okay, but note the volatility is 13% and 15%. Why is there so much risk being packed into six days, not so much risk being packed into four days? And the reason being there's an announcement late in the week. Okay, and I think it's an announcement a lot of people are not going to catch, but okay, the key over here is the expected move is only for the entire next week, $33.58. Okay, so volatility is down, down dramatically. The one thing I'll caution you away from, if it's me, I'm probably not selling these options. 
Okay, I'm not going to sell the weeklies and pray that we stay in a $33 range. Why am I not going to do that? Because that's one of the lowest expected moves that we've seen recently, period. There's no if and or but about it. It's one of the lowest expected moves. Okay, look at this past week in the S&Ps. Just look at the past week in the S&Ps. Did we move more in one, two, three, four, five days? So if we started the week right here, Okay, let's say at 1950, we ended the week basically at 2000. Did we move more than $33? And the answer is yes, we did. Okay, so we blew through the expected move, okay, of what we saw last week and this week again. The expected move is right back at, you know, $33. I'm not going to be a big seller of premium in the short duration. However, I think there's plenty of premium to sell further out in time. Now, the announcement that's causing the implied volatility to be slightly elevated, not majorly, but slightly elevated later in the week, it's an ECB announcement. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, Mario Draghi, a.k.a. I call him Ivan Drago. So Ivan Drago over there is going to have an announcement. Uh, and if you uh, have no idea what the ECB happens to be, European Central Bank, it's the Europe version of the FOMC. So Ivan Drago over there is to the ECB as to Janet Yellen. By the way, Janet Yellen has a nickname too. I call her what? The Groundhog. So she comes out, sees her shadow once in a while. So Janet Yellen is punks to Tawny Phil. And then we have Ivan Drago, of course, running the ECB. In any regard, it's an announcement. It's a little hidden over there. That can actually rock markets quite a bit because uh, there was a letter that was exchanged uh, regarding the ECB this past week, that letter ultimately described any and all measures, any and all measures are possible in this meeting coming up this week. And that is measures to uh, ultimately spur the economy a little bit inside of Europe. With that, those are the areas you got to be looking at throughout the course of the week. Again, this is not about individual stocks. This is much more about the market as a whole. So the market as a whole is still driving all the individual stocks out there. Again, last but not least, I will cover a little bit about this class. Theotrade.com, iron up. Again, if you are a member, you're invited. It's just going to happen in the Theo chat room. Uh, again, the class is uh, Wednesday, March 9th from 8 to 10. I might go a little bit past that, 8 to 10 Eastern time. If you're on the East Coast, can you, can you hang in with me till like 1030? There's a lot going on in this class. The most important thing is, I am a criteria-driven trader. That ultimately means, okay, I'm going to show you pretty much, you know, step by step, you know, if you're going to recipe to be able to bake a cake, you know, you probably, if you did it a few hundred times or whatever, you'd probably remember it. But when it comes to iron condors, I have really detailed both entry and exit criteria. And... Over the last, you know, I've, I've taught about iron condors for the better part of, you know, a decade and a half. And over the years, I've really refined a huge amount of the criteria to make it easier for you to be able to manage the trades autonomously. Okay. On top of it, a big portion of this class has a lot to do with risk management and the capital allocation. And that's, I will stress again, iron condors, it's not just about putting on a trade and praying that the market stays flat. And the iron condors, don't let the iron intimidate you. All it really does, it's selling out of the money options and hedging those options off. It's not about, okay, it's not about just premium selling. One of the keys is capital allocation to be effective. Okay, in iron condor trading. Again, if you are a member of Theo Trade, join us. The class will be archived immediately following the class. All of my PowerPoint slides will be made available. If you are not a member of Theo Trade, you could just sign up for it. It's 99 bucks over here. Okay, or you could just sign up for Theo Trade. It's 99 bucks for the entire month, um, and gives you access basically to everything that we offer at Theo Trade. With that, again, it's uh, theotrade.com forward slash iron up. Thanks a lot, everybody, for joining us here for the weekend edition of Theotrade.